there are several heads to the shoulder that need to be exercised in different ways, different styles, different angles, and different exercises. When doing a front raise, you're working the front head of the deltoid, the shoulder muscle. If you're weaker in this area, maybe start with this exercise first. The outer delts are worked with outer side raises. This will give you width and it'll put caps onto your shoulders that will give you the illusion of a smaller waist. Then finally, you've got the rear head of the deltoid muscle. This is a hard muscle to really isolate, so make sure you go a little bit lighter, keep strict form, and get that mind-muscle connection. Now these are isolation exercises. So isolation means that it's just working one particular muscle that you're trying to focus on. A compound movement is going to bring in several of those muscles. So a compound movement of the shoulder is going to be like the shoulder press. So if you're doing a straight up press, this is going to incorporate predominantly the front and outer head of the deltoid muscle. So it's going to work the front and it's going to work the side of the shoulder as well. So now we're moving on to the triceps, which is the back of your arms. You've got three muscles there, hence tri, triceps. Pushing down, this is going to work the outer head of your tricep muscle. If you're pushing like you're doing a close grip bench press for instance, this is going to work the middle head. So extending your arms overhead while using a rope or a dumbbell will really work the rear head to give you that outer fullness. 70% of your arm is made up from the tricep, so it's something that you should really focus on. A lot of people train their bigger muscles. They hit their biceps when in fact it's only 30% of the overall arm. Going on to biceps, we have two muscle groups here, hence bi meaning two. To hit the inner head of your biceps you should use a wider grip. To hit the outer head of your biceps then use something like a hammer grip. And if you want to hit the overall mass of the bicep, use a neutral grip. Now on to back muscles. The back is very complex. It's got different muscle fibers running in different directions, so you have to work it from different angles. Your traps are actually part of the back muscle. So when you're working your trap muscles, you're gonna be doing a shrugging movement. If you're gonna be working your lat muscles, that's going to be worked predominantly on a pull down movement. That's really going to hit your lats for thickness and give you that nice V tapering. If you're going to work for thickness of the back, predominantly then you'll want to do a lot of rowing movements. So your bent over rows, cable pulley rows, and single dumbbell rows, that's what's really gonna give you the beef and thickness on your back. Now your lower back is mainly worked through two movements, and that's gonna be your deadlift and your hyperextensions. Moving on to the next muscle, the chest. That's gonna be mainly a fly movement or push movement that's gonna work this area. To start off with the upper chest, you need to lie on a bench this can be a flat bench or an inclined bench which you'd normally set at around 45 degrees. If you're on an inclined bench and you're pushing up or doing a fly, it's going to activate your upper chest muscles. When you bring your arms down to midpoint, just above your nipples, that's going to work mainly the middle of your chest, especially when the bench is flat. And then when you start moving down onto cable crossovers or a decline bench, that's going to work the lower part of your pec muscles. So moving down to the ab muscles, a crunching movement or sit-up movement is going to mostly work your upper abs. When you're bringing your hips up or doing leg raises, for instance, whether it's lying leg raises or hanging leg raises, that's really going to work the lower portion of your abs. The obliques, I don't bother really hitting obliques directly because I find they get worked from several other exercises. So I like to train abs once a week, but I go really hard, sometimes heavy on those days. Next to your legs, your quads, hamstrings and calves make up the legs. Your quads are gonna be really isolated when you're performing a leg extending movement like leg extensions on the machine. That's gonna hit the four quadricep muscles and that's it. It's not gonna bring in any other muscle group. So that's a great exercise to start on. It really warms up your knees and pre-fatigues your quadriceps before going into some compound movements. So a compound movement for your legs is gonna be predominantly for your quads. This would include squats, and leg presses. The further you have your legs up on a leg press platform, it's gonna hit more hamstrings. So if you have it in a neutral position, it's gonna really hit more of your quadricep muscles. You've also got lunges, but that works everything. It works your glutes and it works your hamstrings as well as your quads at the same time. If you wanna isolate your hamstrings, you're going to be leg curling. So this is a really good movement to do if you wanna isolate your hamstrings or warm them up before hitting a compound movement. So moving on down to your calf muscles. The two parts of your calves are gastrocnemius and a sheath of muscle that's called the soleus. Now if you really wanna target the soleus, 
which is going further down your ankle, that's going to be worked mainly with seated calf presses. If you want to work your gastrocnemius, which is the belly and the bulk of the calf muscle, that's a little higher up towards your knee, then you'll work that with standing calf presses. So legs, calves, hamstring, quads, I find work really well with higher repetitions. So that's why I always do around 20 repetitions as a minimum.